I'm Kiki. And I'm Keisha. And, and we, we are, are Super Mom, Mom DIY. DIY. All right, so I should be ashamed <laughs> to even show this to you guys, but this is what my seats look like in my kitchen. So at the time that I bought these chairs with the nice velvety light tan finish, I had no idea that I was going to have as many children or maybe that my children will be as messy as they are. And rather than take the time to recover the chairs and then have to recover them again when they get messy, I decided to make some easy, simple chair covers um, for my chairs that I can always take off, throw in the washing machine, put back on, and so my kitchen at least looks halfway decent and you don't feel like you're sitting in an oil spill whenever you sit down in my kitchen. So stay tuned for this easy tutorial on how to make custom chair covers. The materials that you will need are one and a quarter yard of home decor fabric. Um, but you want to make sure, read the label, that it says it is machine washable because some home decor fabric is not washable. You want the sturdiness and tight knit of home decor, um, but at the same time you don't want anything too fancy that defeats the purpose and you can't wash it. You also need some matching thread, some scrap fabric, and a sewing machine, or you can do this by hand using needle and thread. All right, so what you're gonna do is with a piece of scrap fabric, just sit it on top of your chair. Let it have a, about, uh, I'll say about an inch overhang. Trace it around with a Sharpie and then cut that out to make your kitchen chair pattern. And I actually wrote that title on here because you know, if you're like me, you got tons of scrap fabric and like, what is this for? And so I didn't wanna mess that up. Now, because all the chairs are the same, you only need to cut out one. And then this is gonna end up being your pattern um, to make your chair cover. All right, so here we are back at my cutting table with my finished uh, kitchen chair pattern. So next what I'm gonna do is take my home decor fabric, which I got mine from Joann's when it was a 50% off coupon. You know, those are always the bomb. And I folded it so that I had four uh, layers and I cut through all of them at the same time with my uh, rotary cutter because I do quilt so it's much easier to do it that way and that way I end up with my four chair covers and I only had to cut once so here's the fabric that I chose African inspired I wanted a print but didn't want to make the same mistake of having something that was too light and that I would even have to wash too often but on the flip side you get a material that is dark you can see milk stains juice stains rice you know, all the things that my kids eat. So I wanted something really busy so that it would hide stains and I wouldn't have to wash it every other day. Nobody has time for that. So next what I'm gonna do with my chair cover top is I'm going to measure, use your measuring tape, and measure around the uh, perimeter of the chair cover so that you can make the edges. Now when measuring around, you wanna add an additional half inch for your seam allowance. Then you will cut a three and a half inch wide strip um, of the same material that's gonna make the edge of your chair cover. And I wanted the, the half inches for the seam allowance, but the three inches so that I can have a little bit of overhang to fully fit around that chair and be snug so it's not coming off easily. I don't want it to fold up or just cover the top. I want it to cover around the sides as well. Now take a look at the back of my chair. I wanted to have a more complete look with the hanging edge, so I needed a piece that was gonna be the width of that open space so it can fit through there, cause I'll need another strip to cut that. So if that's the case with your chair, then you'll need to measure that. It's optional, it's totally just a design thing and up to you if you want to have a piece hanging through that open space. So here I went ahead and cut out that smaller piece that's gonna go through that open space in the back of my chair. Now I do not have a serger and that would have been preferred when you're sewing the edges um, of the strips that are going around the side because home decor fabric does fray quite a bit. So instead, since I don't have a serger um, to clean up that edge, what I did was a double hem. So you're gonna fold it up a quarter of an inch and fold it up another quarter of an inch um, in order to make a little small uh, hem, sew it down and that way you're uh, I guess you could say open edge or loose edge is on the inside. So when you wash it and what have you, you don't have fraying and uh, split it, not split ends, but you know, extra fibers coming out and it unraveling. 
So now I'm ready to head to the sewing machine. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance and I'm going to take those ending strips. I just pinned it all the way around my chair cover and then just sewed it all the way around. Now I did um, make my stitch width shorter than I normally do just so I get it real tight and again that's going to help me with any fraying later because I do plan on washing these quite a bit because my kids are still dirty <laughs> and still real messy. And I'm done. Once I got all four sewed around, I ran upstairs to go ahead and put them on my chairs. They fit nice and snug. I was able to pull them down over those corners. Now, optionally, you could add like a um, like a piece of elastic to tie around the back legs or the back um, arm part if you want to, um, to kind of secure so they don't come off. But I found that I got my measurements pretty, you know, much on the mark so they don't slip off, you know, unless the kid takes them off but I like that nice three inch um, width that I gave on the edge and I'm all done and they're so easy to wash love it 